is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and welcome to another talk story with John Waihe. As usual, we have a very, very interesting guest for all of you this afternoon. And we are also trying a kind of a new process, at least for me. Uh, some of my other fellow hosts may have done this before, but for me, it's an exciting new experience. And that is that our guests will be joining us via Skype from Kauai. I would like uh, all of you to meet this afternoon Consul, well, Senator slash Councilman Gary Hoosier. And if you've heard that name before, it's probably because it's been associated with some of the more progressive movements, political movements in the state of Hawaii. Aloha, Gary. Aloha, Governor. Hello, John. How are you? Fine, thank you. You know, um, I, I invited you here, well, you know, because you have founded a very, to me, important, uh, important organization, I guess, or institution, a project, which is to train young people who have a commitment to public service, uh, train them how to run for office and, and be successful. But before we go into that, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, what it is that you, you how it is that you came about to do this. Well, thank you, I'd be happy to. You know, I've, I've uh, graduated from high school in Honolulu, Radford High School. And then Radford, came to you're a Radford guy, yeah? Oh, yeah. great. <laughs> the, uh, uh, lived in Ho on Kauai, raised my family here since 1980, have a background in small business. And then in 96 or so, I became really aware of what's going on and became very dissatisfied and uh, went looking to find other people to run for public office. I went to the handful of friends that could get elected and say, you know, why don't you run? Right. And they told me I was crazy <clears throat> and then said, why don't I run? And so I did. I ran in 1996 and I lost my first race for the Kauai County Council. But I hung in there and ran again and won, uh, served four years in the Kauai County Council then ran for the Hawaii State Senate representing Kauai and Niihau, served eight years there, um, and then ran for lieutenant governor and lost, and then worked up for a short period for Governor Abercrombie as a director of the environmental quality. Uh, and then I really loved serving in public office, so I ran for the council again, served four more years in the council, and lost my last race. Well, uh, but tell us, and, uh, you know, you were, uh, very important part of the Senate. I mean, you, you were chair, chairperson of the uh, Consumer Protection Committee, I, if I remember correctly. I was correctly. majority leader for four years. I was majority, a majority leader. leader. So yeah, you're in the leadership. Leader and uh, you know, was very involved with a lot of, uh, some would say controversial issues, but I think very important issues, uh, marriage equality, uh, that, kind of, that kind of thing, you know, uh, energy, environmental protection, economic justice issues. Well, that's terrific. So how does that background lead you? I guess your uh, program is called the Pono Initiative, or I, I know it's connected to something right. called the Kuleana Academy. So maybe right. there, you can several, tell us how that uh, all happened. organizations that I helped start, found. Um, you know, I started thinking and talking to my friends, people like you and others in the community, you know, what's wrong with our government? Why isn't it working the way we, we need it to work and want it to work? And came to the conclusion was we, we needed to have better candidates running for office. <clears throat> when I say better candidates, I mean people that understand the process, people that are electable, and people that share uh, our worldview of, of economic justice, environmental justice. And, and so we decided, I formed an organization called uh, HAPA, the Hawaii Alliance for Progressive Action. Right. And we have a statewide board. I'm president of the board, a volunteer. And uh, we've started this program that you spoke at yesterday. Thank, the, uh, thank you. And it's called the Kuleana Academy. Okay. And uh, we bring in people uh, uh, from all over the state, mostly young people, but it's, there's no age requirement. 
people who want to run for public office or serve and don't know really how to do it and don't know where to start. Maybe they're a little afraid of, of doing it. And we, it's a competitive process. People apply, they're interviewed, uh, references are checked. And then we put them through a very rigorous pro program, training program. And this is our third program we've, we've just started. So how many, how many uh, people are in the, uh, in the, I guess you would call them classes? Uh, yes, uh, yes. The, the core program of the one we're at now is around 15 people. Uh, 15. So you, uh, and at the end of, of this year, we will have graduated about 50. About 50 people from wow. every single island. Uh, and of those 50, I would guess 15, one five, will probably run for office, either a county office or a state office in 2018. Uh, it's, it's important that I point out that HAPA in the Kulian Academy is a nonpartisan program. Uh, so we don't uh, endorse candidates and we don't support any particular party, even though I'm a Democrat and the majority of, of people are. Uh, we're nonpartisan and we, we train, we identify, recruit and train, but we don't actually uh, support the candidates as they run because we're a 501c3. Okay, I got it. So w tell me a little bit about the curriculum. I mean, w w how do you train somebody? I mean, you got like sign holding 101, uh, you know, uh, canvassing we, expertise. We, and what, what do we, you do? We, we actually do sign holding 101, the basic, you know, because <laughs> really? it does take a certain uh, experience, you know, to, to do it properly. Just like knocking on doors, you know, you got to watch out for the dogs, as you know. You've got to, you don't want to trespass. You know, that uh, has gotten worse over the years, you know. There, <laughs> there was a time when the dogs were very friendly. Yeah. No, we have, we have first-class instructors that come in. Uh, there's a gentleman, John Bickle, who, who you might know. Right. John is From the big an award-winning right? speech and debate coach. And oh. he comes in and he, spe he teaches speech and debate. Uh, Another woman, uh, Dawn Webster, she's a communications professional. She has her own business. She teaches messaging development. Uh, Rebecca Soon, she's, uh, she's an experienced fundraiser. She oh, teaches Becky, people how Becky to ask Soon, for money. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's a core. I mean, you have to be able to ask. And so yeah, that what's we, interesting, we're teaching practical lessons like that. What's interesting is that those people in their daily lives teach a will work in what they're teaching. Exactly. But you don't get to learn about the practical application, oftentimes, of what's being taught if you just take a college class or even a high school class. You know, you, exactly. speaking is uh, making, for example. Um, no. But social media. I, I yeah. assume that's got to be one of your uh, courses. It, it's big, and we bring in social media experts. You know, when you knock on doors today in an election, on your phone you will have who's registered to vote and who's not. Uh, back in the old days, you'd knock on every door. But now you actually know who votes. Uh, and so we, we teach those kinds of programs. Uh, well, we, and thought, we, I we thought I thought I was so progressive because I had cards, you know, and I'd flip yeah. it around, you know. But if I could have had that information on my phone, how much more effective that would be. And, you know, that, that's what we call the skills training. You know, public speaking, fundraising, how to knock on doors. But we also bring in people, people like yourself, who have actually done it. And we ask you, we've had Representative Chris Lee, Senator Ruderman, uh, wow. Representative Beth uh, Fukumoto, Senator Schatz, come in, real, real people that have, are actually serving now or have served, and, and ask them to talk about how they first got elected, you yeah, know, and what it's they, like to really you know, serve, and what it's like, what it takes to, to, uh, to get elected, the hard work, the shoe leather, as you mentioned. It really takes shoe leather. Well, you know, as I said yesterday, you know, it, this, it's really interesting, but if people are interested in developing or talking about public policy, uh, you know, the entry is not uh, some fancy classes, it's shoe leather. It's being willing to go out and go house to house, meet your neighbors, carry a sign. And it's interesting to see that you've incorporated that, but you've also done something about, va I wouldn't say values, but something about what good government looks like. That's right, that's right. You we, know? we bring in, we focus on uh, three areas when it comes to policy. 
uh, economic, environmental, and social justice kinds of issues. And so we'll bring in people who work in these areas, uh, uh, people from an organization called Appleseed, you might know them. They, they really know the, the, the numbers, they know the policy, and they'll sit down and talk about policy and talk about the realities of how, of how those policies are passed or not passed. Uh, criminal justice reform, another big important issue. So yeah, we, we combined so, the, the ahead, skills, the issues, and that motivation, inspiration of people that are on the ground doing the work. Well, I want to get back to the, the students again. I guess I'll call them students. For, uh, yeah. Although they're, you know, as you say, a diverse group of, of, of people. But the students th that participate seem to have a real commitment, a uh, burden, really, uh, for improving Hawaii. Uh, uh, are there, fo um, is that part of the selection process or do they develop it in the course of the, uh, the training? Huh? How do you get that level of, uh, you know, intensity? Uh, that's a great question. That's a great question. I think it's a sign of the times, actually, you know, with what's going on in the world and in our state. There are a lot of people, like the people in this class, who are, are concerned. They feel that urgency and that need to make change happen and a belief in the system. You know, that's, that's the dilemma. They believe in the system, but the system's not working, and they realize a responsibility for themselves to step up and try to make it work. And I think there's that urgency uh, that's there. And, and again, it's a competitive process, so they apply. They have to want to do this. It's a sacrifice. It's five weekends of their life that they have to spend well, with us in our program. Well, you know, that's all of that is great, but it must cost some money. <laughs> it, it so does. how is it all does. of this funded? I mean, how, who, who makes that possible? The, uh, you know, as, as uh, pre president of the board, I have to brag on our board. We've got a very strong board of directors. It's a statewide board. And the people in the community uh, have stepped up and made donations. So we, we're out fundraising. Uh, people can go to hapahai, H-A-P-A dot org if they want to help. But it takes, it, it's fundraising. And we, we fly people from the neighbor islands. We put them in a hotel. We feed them. Uh, we, you know, have, there's a lot of expenses. Uh, but we believe it's, it's money that we're investing in, in the leadership of, of our community for the future. Uh, what, what else are we going to do? You know, we have to, uh, we, what was it, Churchill who said that uh, democracy is the worst form of government except all the others? Yeah, well, it's the best when you compare it to the rest, right? Yeah. Yeah. And but, so, what are we going to do? We have to. We have to make it work. So you go to uh, hapa dot hapa h i dot hapa high hapa high. You know what's interesting about all of that? Whether we like it or not, and both you and I have been in politics, and it's not our favorite part of campaigning, but one of the essential ingredients is being able to get people to uh, give you uh, the funds or the resources to run. And what you seem to be, what I get from conversations with some of the students, is this, this emphasis not only on getting big donors, but getting your neighbors to share in your campaign. No, absolutely. I mean, a fundamental principle of our fundraising is you have to believe in what you're doing. And you have to be willing to ask people for help. Well, we you know, are going to come back in a minute and uh, follow up on, uh, uh, on this conversation. So, but like everything else, we need to put a, what do we call this, a commercial break? No. <laughs> Spot. Welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, where we motivate, educate, empower, and inspire all women. We are live here every other Thursday at 4 p.m., and we welcome you to join us here at Sister Power. Aloha and thank you. Aloha. I'm Tim Apichaw, host for Moving Hawaii Forward, a show dedicated to transportation issues and traffic. We identify those areas where we do have problems in the state, but also the show is dedicated to trying to find solutions, not just detail our problems. So join me every other Tuesday on Moving Hawaii Forward. I'm Tim Apicella. Thank you. Wow.
Dining all week for the day of the big game. Watching at home just doesn't feel the same. What on the list is who's gonna drive? It's nice to know you're gonna get home alive. Plan for fun and responsibility. Choose a DT. Captain of our team. It's the DT. For every game day, assign a designated driver. Welcome back to Talk Starry with John Waihe'e. By the way, folks, if you want to call in and have a chance to talk to Gary directly or to myself, our phone number is 808-374-2014. There's also an Instagram kind of thing, but that's for somebody younger and smarter than me. Call me if you want to talk. Again, it's 808-374-2014. So here we are with uh, my one of my favorite uh, politicians, Gary Hoosier. Gary, you know, I cannot believe that the only thing you're involved in would be actually nonpartisan. Now, I, I, I understand why you do that, and I, I, and I can see the the commitment and, and, and the dedication to training people for, um, for participating in the system. But you yourself must, uh, you know, just haven't walked away from all the issues we have in Hawaii. You were very famous, for example, as part of the, um, the movement, I think, to protect the aina in Hawaii, uh, in, in, you know, whether it's dumping of, uh, whether it's, you know, putting chemicals in our soil or GMO movements or anything like that. So I hope you haven't given up any of that. Absolutely not. I mean, you can, you can take that uh, to the bank. I, I'm not walking away. I'm, that's why I, I love to do it. I, I feel an obligation to be involved. Uh, this one particular issue, the uh, chemical companies, GMO pesticides, uh, we've been, it's, you know, it's been really intense. It's probably the most intense issue I've been involved with in the 18 years I've served in public office, uh, dealing with five major international companies. Some of the worst uh, polluters in the world are here in Hawaii. And just trying to pass some real reasonable, in my opinion, legislation. Just disclose what you're using. Just disclose so people know who live nearby and don't do it next to schools. And those companies have, have fought me tooth and nail. Uh, you know, I lost my last election to a large to a large extent because of that battle. Uh, but in retrospect, you know, I'm okay. I'm working on a lot of other good good things. But we're we're going to continue pressing that. Um, it's it's kind of hard on a national level with the EPA uh, being. Well, the uh, taken EPA over. now is. I, I question whether it's even an EPA anymore. Uh, you yeah. know, Environmental Protection Agency under our current president. But you know, Gary, it seems to me like it's just good public policy not to destroy the soil that feeds you. Now, I understand how, and maybe I'm wrong, you know, but uh, I understand how farmers have to put up with a lot of pests and the like, but why, why, create, why not create plants that grow well in an, in an environment as opposed to plants that can take uh, absolutely raunchy type poisoning and survive. <laughs> no, ab absolutely. And those poisons, I mean, the science is clear. They permeate everywhere. I mean, they're in your, they're in the food you eat oftentimes, they're in the water. And I equate it to smog in the old days. We didn't just accept it, right? We, we put yeah, in we uh, rules about. and regulations to limit that and to reduce it, to make our air cleaner and water. So that's an ongoing uh, battle that I'm not going to walk away from, but it, I'm also involved uh, in economic justice issues, tax reform, uh, the minimum wage, you know, the people in Hawaii minimum deserve wage. Minimum uh, wage. living wage. That, well, yeah, living wage. Minimum, we call it minimum wage because it's, in a, in a sense, I, I mean, I hate to use this characterization, but, uh, you know, I'll go back to my long hair days, you know, the, the uh, or when I had hair. But anyway, min we, you know, minimum wage means the, the smallest wage that you can get that the politicians would pass 
with a whole lot of uh, with a, a lobbyists, uh, you know, opposing it. And, and so and, and every time it's tried, the the lobbyists come in and say the sky's falling, bad stuff is going to happen. And to my knowledge, with all the increases that have happened over the years, there's never been any kind of economic uh, downturn or any bad things ever happen. Uh, yeah, and by the time people get a minimum wage, it's no longer a living wage. That, right, right. You know, that's and it unfortunate. Should, it should tie to the cost of living. You know, what's a, I remember when we were doing uh, health care on the national level. Hawaii had already established a, um, you know, a, an employer mandate for health care. And when you try to introduce that idea to in other states, the same kind of arguments came up. It was going to put people out of business, blah, blah. And yet you've got to ask yourself, if you're not doing well enough to provide health care, if you're not doing well enough to provide a living wage, maybe you've got to take a look at the business you're in. You know? Well, absolutely. absolutely. And, uh, and people here are struggling, as you know. People, they, they can't find housing. Everything's too expensive, and they're earning. They're working two jobs. And I, I believe that our government needs to set an example, regardless of what the federal government's doing. Our state government and the counties need to start putting people first. You know, we've got luxury condo, luxury apartments, luxury homes all over the place. We need to start putting our focus on working people in the community. And uh, that's, that, that's the kind of vision that I'm trying to talk about and put forward, and that's the kind of vision that the Kuleana Academy participants, the people running for office, I think, believe in also. Well, I tell you, when I was in office, one of my favorite uh, projects, you know, to work on uh, uh, was Kaka'ako, for example. And, and, and I thought of Kaka'ako as being a place where young families, beginning um, people beginning their careers would go and live. Mm -hmm. And as you know, I, I built, uh, the, the state built um, most of the infrastructure, not all, of, um, probably all of the infrastructure in Kaka'ako. And, and what, we t what we said to developers was, here's, you know, this is public money paying for your roads, your sewers, your everything else that you normally would have to pay for. Therefore, you ought to think about providing housing for uh, middle income or, or um, you know, beginning family uh, uh, workers. And, and, and we did. I, I think I built like six uh, different uh, condominiums uh, for aging and so forth. I go there today, Gary, and I am dismayed to say I, I'm being nice to see yeah. condos that are being built for millionaires and Hawaii millionaires are not going to live in those condos. <laughs> no, no, exactly. You know? Exactly. No, the, the concept of living, working, and playing for regular people in, in the area of Kakako I think is a great one. But it's unfortunately been taken over to a large extent by these luxury developers. And it's millionaires that don't even live there. It's that they leave them empty half the time, uh, multimillionaires. And meanwhile, we have homeless people in the same area. You know, uh, I, I don't know the solution, but it may be some of the part of the part of the solution may be providing jobs that pay well enough uh, because they have a minimum wage that's a little meaningful. No, exactly, exactly. Uh, no, I know of homeless people who have talked about why should they work all the time when they don't get nothing. You know. Uh, it's, 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 it's a desperate situation, uh, not to mention the mental health uh, care that, that uh, is lacking in, in some of those uh, situations as well. Uh, we're also, I, I'd be remiss, the Pono Hawaii Initiative is a separate from HAPA. It's a separate organization. Right. Let's talk a little bit about supporting that. candidates. It is supporting candidates. Ah, okay. So you okay. train them as a nonpartisan, and then you hopefully support them when they decide that they don't like the, the um, policies of Donald Trump. Right, right. And they're separate organizations <laughs> with separate legal structures, if you would. And separate ca tax consequences, I, I imagine. That's right. Uh, but yeah, there's there's a lot going on. Uh, I'm, I'm in it full bore. You know, every day this is what I do, uh, working on put, helping, working in, in partnership with many other people. Uh, you know, it's not just Gary Hooser by himself, of course. It's working with people like Appleseed or the Sierra Club 
or so surf is the uh, Pono initiative focus. going to be um, Pono initiative going to be active in the upcoming elections in 2000 we absolutely are we're, we're going to be endor endorsing candidates we're going to be helping them raise money uh, we're going to be helping advise and support them as best we can around the state at the county council as well as at the state level you know what's interesting is that's the way that the people who now control legislators across this country what were they called I, I you know the um, the, the tea party <laughs> yeah like the tea party the Tea Party would be a good example. They actually spent time tr getting into little offices, not right. only big movements. I mean, you didn't, the Tea Party obviously objected to some national politics and, you know, did their usual get out the march stuff. You know, we, we trained in the 20th century, we trained uh, a lot of people how to do that <laughs> as a nation. So, but they actually went and did what you did and went out and elected mayors, councilmen, uh, supervisors, governors, and, and, and worked from the bottom up. And I hope that, uh, you, so, you know, your, your, your effort is uh, successful. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And, and it feels really good. It feels like it's moving in the right direction. Uh, we had several people, uh, students, participants in the program who were elected to neighborhood boards. Uh, a few months ago, and so they realized that that's at the real grassroots neighborhood boards, community associations, boards of commissions. That's where you start. Uh, yes. That, if you get that, I mean, we're still a country that, you know, I look, when Donald Trump got, got out of the uh, Paris Agreement or announced that he no longer was going to participate in the par Paris Agreement dealing with global warming, one of the things that happened is that all across the nation and the world, millions of people protest. And I thought in my, uh, myself was that, that's such a 20th century solution. It, it, as what happened next was, it was in my mind more exciting when whole local governments said, I don't care what Donald Trump does, we're going to follow the agreement, okay, including California. That seems like the 21st century solution. And that, that, tell me if I'm wrong, but it seems like that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to do a 20th cent, 21st century response to some of these issues exactly you know it it's an old adage of of think global and act local so i believe here in hawaii that at the state level and at the county level we can manage our own affairs and we can set an example for the rest of the country actually and you're going to create local global citizens there we go i tell you Congre Thank you, Gary. I enjoyed Thank you very much, Governor, for, for taking the time and, and uh, inviting me on today. And good luck. And, uh, you know, you're creating some very exciting uh, movements in the state. All right. Ahui ho. Ahui ho.